Today, some points on building a crawl space foundation using insulated concrete forms, which we've talked about before. And then we're going to be rolling the joists and... I get it. I'm in Colorado, but we're talking the floor joists for building a foundation for the modern mountain cabin. And then we're going to be decking the subfloor and a couple of tricks on that. And then to vent or not to vent? That is the question. And then at the very end, we're going to talk about rewarding bad behavior and knowing when to say, you're fired. If you've been following the build series, you know we've already discussed insulated concrete forms, ICFs. And here's my application for them on stem walls. And here we are filling those stem walls with concrete using a concrete conveyor belt, which I've never used before. And the advantage here is, for one, they don't have concrete pumps in the area. And maybe because the concrete freezes inside the hoses. Now I had every intention to make a video of us installing these ICFs for our stem walls. But we started unloading the truck and it was going so fast and so easy that we just kept going and we never even turned on the camera. So Mark and I started offloading the trailer and staging the ICFs close to where they should go and then it became apparent that it's going so fast we might as well just keep on going and it took us about an hour and a half and we were done with this entire foundation a stem wall and then we were ready to pour concrete So now it's time to lay out all this 2x12 joist material and I like to lay them flat. It's kind of a safe thing, it's hard to fall through, it's easy to walk on them and you just stand them right up where they need to be. And I'd like to introduce you to a new guy, his name's Viren. Uh, serious about working, not much about talking and wasn't too keen on being on camera, but <laughs> he's an easy going guy. Oh and by the way, He's also former military, Merchant Marine. So I wanted to show you guys the detail on this, how I framed up the point load under this front wall. I'm a SIPS builder, I'm an electrician, and I've been a framing superintendent for a while. The way you run electrical in a SIPS wall is through the crawl space, through the bottom, in conduit. And there's a closed cell. This is an eight and a quarter thick, it's R54, and it's 17 foot tall. And I could bear on just the rim joist of an inch and a half, but I needed more than that. And I needed access also to run the electrical. Now this wall is already facing the south to take advantage of that solar gain. And it's also facing the predominant wind direction. Now we get gusts here a lot at 90 miles an hour. And this is built and engineered to 132 mile an hour gusts. So it's already going to have a lot going on and I didn't want it barren on just the rim joist. And you might be wondering why the scuttle hole is framed into the decking on the interior of the house. That's because this is an airtight house and there are no penetrations into the crawl space on the outside of the house. The biggest reason for me, it's going to be snowing. The crawl space, you'd have to dig out snow in order to get underneath there. Sometimes you won't be able to because it's five feet deep. So a couple of things are happening really quick here. You might have seen at 4 inch PVC, we put that down in the crawl space. That's actually for the return for the heat recovery ventilation. So it's already going to be in there because we're about to close this thing up. And you might also notice that I do blocking as I go. Now I can already hear you typing right now uh, that it takes longer and yes it does. Now time is not what I'm interested in. I'm actually looking at doing a better job and it's easier to access and nail as you go rather than come back and do the blocking later. Those are all over a mid-span beam. We call it midpoint beam some places and I can probably hear from the people that call it intermediate girder but their blocking is right over that. You might have also seen that blue flash that we just put underneath there in the crawl space. That's actually the vapor barrier. It's a 26 mil and really stout stuff 
Now's the time to put it down there. We roll it out, cut it to length, just lay in there, and then use a four inch pipe and just roll it right underneath there without tearing it. Now this is gonna cover a lot of things on decking this crawl space. I'm not getting into all the details of framing and rolling joist and nailing and everything. I did come across a channel the other day called Awesome Framing and they do an excellent job and they do a whole video on everything and I'll just put a link so you can go find them. It's very detailed and nobody's better than Larry Hahn. You gotta watch Larry Hahn. I still watch him and he's still inspiring. R.I.P. Larry Hahn. We don't get to use a high VOC DAP product like you see here. We use a foam gun now. The water-based products that they're making us use, they don't hold and they freeze in this weather. If life is a race, then building your own home just might be an obstacle course. You might as well plan for it to be a marathon. When the weather's coming in, might just turn it in to a sprint. Now here in Colorado at 9,000 foot in January, it does not get above freezing. And that weather right there is why I don't deck a crawl space until about a week before the sips are going to come in. I don't want any degradation of the materials. Now I promised we were going to talk about vents. Now first thing you might notice on this crawl space is there are no vents. We don't do vented crawl spaces anymore. Now when the excavator guy showed up to backfill, he was like, you got no vents. I go, we don't do vents. He goes, you got to have vents. I go, we don't do vents. And he followed with a line of explicatives. And I'm just going to keep it clean because this is a family show. As a rule, I don't backfill until all the joist and the decking is done because the pressure on the walls uh, from the dirt and the heave from the frost uh, can collapse and just uh, deform your stem walls. So I want you to notice it's pretty much artwork, somebody that can handle a big machine excavator like that in close proximity to things around him, that's such a soft touch. I can do it myself now in this video. You can see I like getting really close to, there's a porch right above me. But this guy right here, he's been doing it for a dang long time. He's really good until he isn't. And you might be asking, where's the grizzly? And there's a grizzly right there. If you don't know what a grizzly is, it's not a bear coming after you. But it was a bear on this job because he started dumping all these boulders and pushing up, up against the house. We talked about it. We disagreed about it. And I had to ask him to leave. So, didn't realize that firing him was going to be such a big deal. I had the sheriff come out and he said, I need to warn you. The county officials came out and said, hey, you need to be watching your back. And I'm like, eh, I'm not going to do that. But uh, it got into a big old deal. He ended up quitting his job with, as an inspector. It became a big deal and wish it wouldn't have been. But also, here's a rule that I play by. If someone is more interested in making money than making a reputation based on good work, then they're not my kind of people and I'm going to ask them to leave. Now I don't know to recommend this, but we didn't have a contract. He insisted on just a handshake deal. I was good with that. That's the way they did it. I didn't want to buck the system. And he was happy when I showed up at his house. Don't recommend that, but I did pay him his check. And you're going to have to come to a decision based on if you can do the work yourself, you can replace them, because they may be the only game in town, but you know what? Don't ever jeopardize your integrity or the integrity of the build, because some things are worth more than money. So if you've got the right equipment, in this case a Grizzly, half mile down the road, then go get it and use it and do the job right. And just to finish this out, Part of doing it right is just painting that subfloor and protecting it from the weather. Now you can see some of the sips are coming in, and you can also see a big old excavator. When I told that guy to get his equipment off my property, <laughs> uh, he did, and that's where it stayed, and I got to look at it for the next three months. But here we go. We got sips being delivered. We're about to put up walls. 
This is going to go fast. So now they'll build it. That's it.